He was here on Monday with Israel Adesanya, and now it's his time to sit in the hot seat. There he is. Hey, good morning. Tim Simpson, Afternoon. how are you? How are you? Oh, we don't get the big hug like with Israel. Oh, there he is. Oh, you got a coffee? I don't want to... Am I, do I need a coaster for this? No, no, no. Right. A coaster? Come on. We like to keep it real yeah. here. But that... Could have used the Crows jersey. What a... Oh, wow. <laughs> I have the, uh, the cup right over there. Ah, uh, it's all right. What is your right. team again? West Coast Eagles. What, and how are they doing? <laughs> Bad? Do you know? I don't know. I actually oh. don't really follow. Oh, it's like the wor one of the worst seasons in, in AFL history for us right now. Really? <laughs> we're on the bottom, and I think we're like chasing the most 100-point losses ever in a season. 100-point like, losses? It's bad. We've been like really badly injured, Okay. Like even on top of that. And this is it's AFL, bad. right? Yeah, yeah. That is Australian rules football? Yeah. What is the difference between that and rugby union or rugby league? Is it a totally uh, different sport? Yeah, yeah, completely. Oh, totally different sport. So, right. so the the origin of AFL is that people they wanted to play a sport that was like less rough than rugby, I guess, and it's like a blend of like soccer and rugby. Okay, but and it's uh, it's an amazing game. It's, it's the number one game in in Australia, number one sport in Australia. Right, and is that the Perth team? The one There's that you two support? Perth teams, yeah. Okay. The West Coast Eagles and the Fremantle Dockers, the two West Australian. I'm teams. just a big Adelaide Crows guy. How are they doing? I'm such I a big guy. Know. They're like middle of the pack. Middle of the pack. Middle of the right. pack. But we're, yeah, we're the, we're the worst season we've ever had. So. Uh, well, you're having a great run, personally yeah. and Aside professionally. From <laughs> yeah. Aside from West Coast, life is good. Yes. Uh, I saw you on Monday when you were here yeah. with Izzy. Looked like you were hurting a little bit after yeah. a late uh, Sunday. Yeah. But come on, man. Tribeca Film Festival. First off, congratulations to you and Thank everyone you. on the movie. I still am thinking about the movie, honestly. It's like still yeah. stuck with me because of the way it was shot because of how open he was in the movie. Yeah. And again, I'll, I'll say the same thing that I said to Izzy, like I don't want to give away too much. If you follow him, you know what is coming up, right? Like, so it's interesting because yeah. we I know that after you know Whitaker is this fight and after this fight is that fight, but then you get to see these other things that are going on. It's just tremendous. I'm assuming you're happy with it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it a few times. Okay. I think that was the third time I've seen it, or the second, yeah, second and a half time I've seen it. But a lot of those, like I've been involved in a few different MMA documentaries. Right. And when you're too close to it, I don't think you can appreciate it as much. But this one, because it's so much deeper, I didn't have that feeling. You know, and watching it in a cinema, I watched it like on my laptop. There were some watermarks on it. Watching it in the cinema was definitely the most enjoyable. Um, with his parents with, there? Yeah. It, with, with everybody, you know. Yeah. I had like, you know, like my, my partner was there. You yeah. were there. Everybody, like all our friends and families, everyone was there. It was, it was... It was really special. Yeah, really special. Because the also the the cinema wasn't too big, so it kind nah, of felt like a, a real private screening. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, and just like afterwards, getting that that you know, getting Eugene dragged up the yes. front. It's <laughs> all emotional. That. Yeah, uh, he he's he's a remarkable man. You know, the funny thing, and I said this to you, it's like I my, a good barometer for for the MMA world for me is my friends because mm. like. I'm so deep into it, but I got a lot of friends that know like your Izzy's and or your Connors and there's a big title fight, but they're kind of on the edge of it. And like they knew some of the stuff that went on the movie, but I brought one of my best friends oh. and he was like, man, I knew some of the stuff about Izzy, but Eugene was remarkable. Like, yes. He was like that, as him as a character in that movie, he was like that, it was so dynamic, it was so deep. So I was like, Eugene as the character was, was it was, I want to say it was a movie about him, but like that was what, and, and my partner and other people as well, they're like, for me, it was Eugene was, was the most interesting part of all of that. He's one of my favorite people to have on this show because yeah. also like he takes these 10 second pauses before <laughs> yeah. responding. So it makes you hang on to every word. Yeah. It's so thoughtful. And I know. I want to do real. that. I'm going to do that at some You're gonna point. You're going to do that? Because <laughs> I, know. I noticed him do it. Like, it's so good. When I first started, when, when um, Ash introduced us to Eugene and Izzy, and all that, and we used to have meetings with Eugene about working together. When we're like, would you know, ask a question, be like almost like a negotiation, or like we're trying to convince him to work with him. Yeah. He would do that. Oh. He'd ask him something, and in a meeting where everyone's like ready to talk first, he'll like pause. I'm like, it's <laughs> a fucking power move. <laughs> it's stressful. I know. Those moves, especially <laughs> it's, like it, it's not stressful when I'm interviewing him, but if you're trying to sell him on something, I know. He's pondering. I know. I know. He's he's yeah. He's still a dickhead, but he's a, he's, a, he's a remarkable dickhead. By the way, they've told me a, a few times, like, you, you were kind of courting them. You know, there's yeah. the Australia connection and all that, yeah. Ash. Um, you live close to New Zealand or from close. When did you first start to go after Izzy? Like, when, when I, honestly, when I, when I started in this industry, my first, when I actually went and met the guys from Paradigm the first time back in 2015, in that meeting, they were like, who's the... Who's because I'd just come from Australia. Like, who's the guy next up from Australia? 
and I was like, there's no one in Australia top of my mind, but there's this kickboxer in New Zealand who's had like three or four MMA fights, and I guarantee you, this guy's gonna be a mega star. Wow. And then I started working at Paradigm. First thing I did was like, because I used to message Iggy on Facebook when I was just a fan. Wow. Yeah, so I, like, I, was, I was still at a university at the time. I used to message him like his fan page, like, ah, oh, man, like, you're the best, you're, you're the, like I'm watching. And he would respond because he was like, he wasn't who he was back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I would hit him back, hey, now I work in MMA. Now I work for this agency. Now we should manage you. And he's like, oh, I'm good right now. So it, it basically, like, as soon as I had, like from 2015, basically. Wow. Yeah. And then you're on the red carpet with him at Tribeca Film yeah. Festival. Yeah, it's cool. That is wild, man. Last time we had you in studio, uh, we were talking about your career. We did the whole story about you coming over and all that. But so much has happened since. Last six months, yeah. Insane. changed in life. (laughs) Uh, You are no longer with Paradigm. You have now started your own management group, a boutique group, if you will. Is that a fair thing to say? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I have the roster right here. Uh, It's less Taitui Vasa, Yuri Prochaska, Casey O'Neill, Mohamed Mokhaev, Don Madge, Max Holloway. Jack Hermanson, Leon Edwards, Jack Della Maddalena, Hakeem Daoudou, and Israel Desanya. That's a who's who. Mm. That is a who's who. Uh, it's your own team, chosen advisory group, the chosen few, hashtag chosen few. Um, it's tremendous what you've done at such a young age. 31? 31, yeah. 31. 31. 31. Just turned 31. Can we start? Because, you know, I've been trying to get you on the show for a while. You've been quite elusive. <laughs> once a year. Yeah, once a year. Exactly. Once a year. <laughs> uh, when there's something really big to talk about. Why did you decide to go out on your own? Um... That was my pause. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. I was like, shit, is he about to say some shit here? What's no, going no, no. <laughs> that was good. No, though. I mean, listen, the, there's, a lot, there's a lot that went into it, right? And, and a lot, you know, I don't, I don't want to air publicly. Some things transpired, some things over time. I'd say that, that the fundamental difference was between me and Paradigm, there was a difference in, in vision and a difference in values. And that, that was what, I guess, started wearing on me and, and realizing that that may not be the place for me anymore. You know, I was there for, for eight years almost, you know, from, from 23 to 31, 23 to 30. You know, I'd say it's like the cliche of the best years of your life. Yeah. Like I, I really gave everything to that. That was all my life was, you know, it took a huge toll on, on personal relationships, on my health, on, you know, just kind of growing up and, and in your 20s. You know, I looked at my friends traveling the world doing that. And, and of course I had amazing, phenomenal experiences in life doing this. But it was all I did for eight years, right? And, and it started to wear on me. And, and when the, I guess, the, the value and the vision changed and I felt like I wasn't on board with what, what they were doing anymore. And, and that's not saying what they're doing isn't great. It's just different, mm. right? Like, like you, when you left ESPN, right? It's, mm. It doesn't have to be a, this is why and there's this critical reason. Sometimes it's the right thing for you. And it was the right thing for me. I needed to make a change for, for many reasons. And, and fortunately, it all panned out. You know, when, when I left, I, I resigned in December and there was no chosen advisory. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going right. to do. Okay, like so I, you I, didn't, wow, you, you just left. Yeah, yeah, I, I, had, I, had not, I had nothing planned. I was like, like, it's not like I had this, this, this thing to set up. These guys are coming there. Like, the only people that knew were my partner, her dad, my dad were the three people wow. that, that knew that, that I was going to resign. And I was like, what will be, will be. Like, for, for, I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll end up back in Australia doing something. Like, maybe I'll... I'll... But leaving MMA? Yeah, that, I was ready for that. Wow. I was ready for that, you know? Like, like, were you burnt out? To a degree, but it was just like, it, it was like, if I was willing to walk away from that, I had to be prepared that it wasn't going to work out, you know? And so I was, I was at peace with that. You know, that there was, I, 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 you know, I felt like I had a good enough relationship with a lot of these guys that, that they may want to hang around or maybe I'd, I'd work in something else. Maybe I'd go work for Engage with Ash or, mm. or maybe like I'd go to the dark side, go work for a promotion or something like oh. that. I was like, I hope I stay in MMA, but I was prepared for any outcome. You know, I, I, was, I was away, nobody knew. You know, within the next couple of days, my clients, former clients at that stage were messaging me. I had to tell them, hey, I'm not in this anymore. And then they call me like, what the fuck are you doing? Wow. <laughs> Once I tell like Israel, Leon, all those other guys, they're like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't really know. And they're like, are you going to stay in MMA? And I go, well, what do you think? I guess so. And they're like, whatever you do, we're going to do. And I'm like, well, that makes me feel great. I probably have something here. Okay. That, that was really That's how it. it started. Yeah. Was then, there any part of you that thought about joining another management team? Not really, because it was like, 
I wanted to do my own thing, not necessarily as like from a work perspective, but I was just in a big company, mm. right? And that, and that, again, vision of a big company that wants to grow and scale and be big. And like, I, I, I had autonomy there. It's not like I was in this like corporate thing and everyone was like holding me down. Like, like I was treated, I was treated fine there, you know? And like, I, I had the autonomy, but from going from like, from one big company to another big company, because a lot of them reached out, like I'm not gonna lie, I won't name names, but pe- people, Everyone kind of wanted to know what I was doing and said, hey. Trust me, a lot of them reached out to me, to you. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, what am I, this guy's agent or something? What's going on? You're fielding so calls on your behalf. It, 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 I thought about it. Obviously, that would have been like the secure thing to do, yeah. go get a, a paycheck, go get a, go get a salary. But I was like, why would I do that? You know, I'd rather give this a shot now and see. And, and, and if it didn't work out, maybe I'll go get a job. But I've been fortunate that it, that it turned out pretty well and, and – Without sounding like like a, an asshole, I've honestly never been happier in my life. Wow. Like my life, holistically, everything going on, it's like it just I've never been happier. I wake up every day motivated, happy. I'm rested. I'm not in a different city every week. Like right. when you do things on your own terms, again, you I guess in a similar position, right? You went did things on your own terms. Like it's very very rewarding, and everything that I envisioned how I wanted to live my life is, is happening right now. So. Um, yeah, it's good. Like if if that that could be there, like maybe maybe there's an offer that I can't refuse, or another agency that I join. But right now, I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing. Keep it small. Well, know, at this point, why fighters. would you? Though? I mean, you you've got yeah. you've got the clients. The one thing that I kept getting asked, and honestly, I don't know the answer to this question. When you made the announcement, you put out that cool video um, announcing the roster, and I love how you like. Uh, yeah, I got this guy and a lot of these guys you're associated with, but then Max is a part of the announcement, yeah. which was tremendous the way you played that. I'm going to ask you about him in a moment. But um, the comments are guys like, what? So like, how did Tim take all these guys? How did this happen? Mm. For those that don't understand how that works, how does that work? You're with Paradigm, you're representing them. Mm. How do they come to you now? I mean, as much as I've been like... You know, I'm I'm very little drama. I don't like I'm not big into social media and everything. And I and like people can say what they want. The only thing that triggers me a little bit when people are like, "Take, you took." I'm like, uh. "How do you take a person?" Hmm. You know what I mean? It's like these these people like the 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 eight athletes that came with me. It's like they have free will. Like there was no taking. You know what I mean? I don't know. You're not saying it like yes. that. Yeah, no, no. I, you, I get it. You hear a little bit. It's like, oh, you took. It's like, what do you mean? How do you how do you how do you take someone that has free will to make their own decisions, right? So, I think you're asking from maybe from like a more legal perspective or from like a functional perspective. Yeah, how does that but work? Yeah, I mean the 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 I don't want to I don't want to disclose anything confidential as 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 how a a, a contract works um, in that sense. But yeah, I mean there there was nothing contractually stopping anyone from going anywhere, right? And obviously, I'm I'm honouring any fetal or ongoing payment obligations to the work that I did while I was there and I and I've been I've made sure that that's been adhered to and the right thing is done by them even though it was the work that I did while I was there I'm making sure that they're honored for that right yeah so as long as that's done it's 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 simple you know we we it's a, it's California there's no restraint of trade you can't stop people from working in California there's 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 nothing like that so kind of just worked out you know re- what I learned, I guess, more than anything in this process is that relationships are everything, everything. You know, when I started, when I speak to you, when I spoke to the clients, when I spoke to the UFC, whoever it is, um, I felt a little bit, a little bit, uh, in other words, proud or a little bit validated that the responses, and maybe people talking shit behind my back, but <laughs> no, I don't think validated so. that, that, it was just all positive, you know? Mm. Everyone really, I really felt everyone was like, good for you, you know? And those relationships I was able to, to I'm gonna use the word take, but take those relationships to, to this new business and, and really day-to-day business hasn't changed. I don't feel that that different, right? So I think as long as the, I'm a relationships person, a contract's a piece of paper and you, you know, I'm a lawyer as well, you gotta obey that, but really a relationship's gonna shine through in the end. So. As long as the relationships are there and you have people's trust, that that was how it all worked. How many people work for Chosen? Just one. Just you. Me and Dan. You haven't okay. met, met Dan. I don't know if you've been connected with Dan. On uh, I think on uh, Instagram or something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's just you and him. And where did he come from? So Dan <laughs> shares a similar story to me. He's Australian. Australian okay. lawyer um, reached out to me 
excuse me, for a number of years. Um, he, he, I hired him at Paradigm probably like four months before I left there. So when I left, um, you know, again, I didn't tell anybody, but he was like, what do I do now? I'm like, man, you'd make your decision, but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a job for you here. Okay. You know, he, he's, Dan's amazing. He's amazing. He's, he's a young lawyer, brown belt in jiu-jitsu, kickboxer, massive, massive MMA fan. We share a similar story and he, okay. he works his ass off. Um, you know, he he's, relates well to the fighters. So it's just, just me and Dan. But then I had like... Like I have some outside st- outside contractors. I have a, a great accountant. Shout out to Jenny, the camera. Thank yeah. you, Jenny, for all your help. Uh, so I've, I've had I've had like some outside help. You know, some legal stuff setting up the company. Um, Jenny, my accountant. But inside, day to day, it's just me and Dan. How how hard is that to actually set it up? Um, <laughs> get it off the ground. It's it's and this might be a problem with the industry it's embarrassingly easy to start an mma management company wow from a nuts and bolts perspective yeah obviously the relationships the experience the ability no no yeah i know but the foundation yeah it's it's ridiculously easy you know like that we don't have any i don't really have any overheads we don't have an office away from home there's no like licensing or registration there's no inventory provide a service right so Yeah, you just make a company and get going, really. Like, there's com- compliance stuff you have to be in compliant with with California, but like, yeah, it's it's it's. I tell people it is embarrassingly easy. I could to be set one tomorrow. Yeah, you could. That's wild. Easy. easy. Is it like that in boxing too? Uh, uh, pretty similar. Yeah, I think there's some licensing. Not an stuff NBA well. and NFL and all those. No, those you gotta to... you gotta pass the certifications. Yeah. you've got to do all that. Yeah, the, there's a lot to it. MMA, it's like. And you do it without a company. A lot of people do it without a company. You just have a, like a contractor agreement with a fighter and you say, I'm an MMA manager now. That is Which is probably a problem, but... Yes. From the nuts and have... bolts of running the company, it's really easy. Do you think that'll ever change? Mm. I don't know. It would, it would, I think it would, it would go alongside like a unionization effort yeah. or something like that, right? I think then, then you'd have like more certification. And there are like elements. You're, you're meant to be licensed in different things, but it's pretty loose and... I don't know. I, I, I'm optimistic that the sport will continue to grow and be more professional. And what is it like when you have guys like Izzy and Leon and Yuri and Mokhaev and all these dudes, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm coming with you." I mean, it did feel good. I mean, the the, the one that like the one it's like it, it sticks with me is Izzy when he's like, obviously we have Ash and Huge. Yeah. So he's like, I, I spoke to him. I'll speak to them. But then he was like, "I'm." He, he said to me, "He's like." I'll do whatever you do. Wow. And when you hear that, you're like, it's validating. You're right. like, damn, I must be doing something right. Because like, that's a, that's a big, Paradigm is a big, well-known company, right? They've got a big engine, they've got a lot of staff. It's like, if I'm a client, if I put myself in their shoes, I feel some security there. But when a lot of these fighters are like, they don't even ask twice. I didn't even, I couldn't even pitch them anything. <laughs> like, I couldn't be like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is my company. This is how we're going to structure it. Like, my pitch was like, I don't know. And if a pitch that week through the strength of my relationship with them, you know, that they're willing to, I'm going to follow you to whatever you do, that, that, that makes me feel good. Uh, that, that's a good feeling. I, I can't imagine. Um, last time you were on, you talked about your relationship with Adi Attar, who's at the face of, of Paradigm, right? Yeah. How are you guys now? Yeah, fine. Fine. I mean, we're, we're not like, I, I hold no personal grudges or anything like that. You know, Audi sent me a nice message on my birthday, like okay, great. something like that. But yeah. like, uh, there's no animosity or nothing there. Okay, you know? good. Fine. That is good. Uh, did you consider, jo- I was I was wondering if like the UFC would try to, they could use guys who understand that side and come mm. over. And not to say that they need any help, they're doing just fine. But I was just wondering if like a hunter would say, why don't you come over here and mm. do this, that. It was was there ever any talk of that in the early days? Nah. No, no, no. Like, like obviously they, they they reach out to me and everything and I have to tell them, you know, I'm not there anymore. Okay. Um, but that crossed my mind. I was like, hey, if, if, I, if I quit and I start telling clients I'm not there and they're like, cool, peace, see ya. And some of them said that. Not ones that I want to come with me, but yeah, I'd be yeah. like, they'd message me be like, hey, I'm not there anymore. I wish you all the best. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. All the best for you. And like, if, if everyone did that and I'd be like, hmm, what am I going to do with my life? Maybe I'd make that phone call to a hunter or someone be like, hey, you have a job for me, but I don't. I don't really know where I'd fit. You know? Yeah, no, no. I think you're way better suited on this side. But I was yeah. just wondering if you wanted to see what it was like on the other side of the fence. I, I think like I, I think matchmaking would be fun. But also like I've done a little bit of matchmaking on like a 
for like this this Spanish promotion I helped make to fight. It was so fucking stressful. Really? <laughs> it's hard and like Sean and Mick, what they go through, that's a hard job. It's yeah. a really hard job because shit like falls apart all the time and like I've only got like 10 fighters, right? And I'm, I'm in contact with them every week. I, I, I try and put myself in their shoes. Like you've got hundreds of people calling you about your fighters and everything. People have your phone number like... The idea of matchmaking sounds fun, but I think day to day it would be yeah. fucking tough. People falling out and all that. Yeah, scramble. yeah, yeah. And just you know, you got it. You're negotiating. Negotiating takes a lot of energy. Right. You're been negotiating all day long. Um, so you said you have ten now. Yeah. Uh, what is the the cap? Right now, ten. Ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, you're I've, not open for business. No, I mean, listen. If an outlier. Sure, I've, sure, I've, sure. Like, like, you're not seeking anything. No, no, no. no. Oh. So, I really wanted to have like try and keep it one per weight class. Mm. There's two weight classes where I have two, but but which one's that? Welterweight and middleweight. I have Got two it. in each. Got it. Um, but other than that, I really want to keep it one per weight class. Um, much more manageable to really just push for their interest. Like as much as you you are pushing for everybody, it's like you got five guys in the top ten. Tough. It does get com- it gets complicated. So I really want to keep one per weight class. Obviously heavyweight. There's Thai now. Um, I don't have a lightweight or a bantamweight, but right now I think. Just with me and Dan, our outside sales teams, our outside teams, and um, 10 clients, I think that's very manageable. Like, I think we're doing good work. Life's good. Like, obviously you get these like busy weeks like this and you feel stretched, but that's very manageable. I'm very, I'm very confident in my business model right now. So 10 right now, I, I said, you know, at least until next year, focus on who we got now. When I feel like we can take it on, then maybe we'll expand a bit, but but right now, unless there's a top three guy, top five guy that, that really really wants to work with me, and I figure it out, like I'm good where I'm at right now. What is your business model? Um, you know, boutique, client focused, MMA management agency and advisory. I've done, I have done a little bit of like outside advisory type work, consulting work, like um, with some of my partners. Like uh, Ivana Petrovic, who's debuting in the UFC July 1. Her manager is my partner, David Garcia, who I work with Jack and Manson on. Mm. I helped open the door for her into the UFC and use my relationship with Mick to, to help get her an opportunity. I'm working with um, Eldar Eldarov in Bahrain there, um, helping his heavyweight, Shamil Gaziev, go into Contender Series. So I'm doing a bit of like, oh wow, that's their managers. Okay. But through my relationships, I'm helping open those doors for them. So I will keep doing that because it takes a bit of the day to day strain off. But yeah, it's really just one per weight class, focus on on a holistic effort of sponsorships, endorsements, media, fights, um, and then really beyond that, without sounding cliche, like I found like I found my purpose a little bit with with fighters' lives. You know, obviously working with Leon, like someone who's so close to me personally, like we've really built a lot in finding the right accountant, financial manager. Um, cleaning up his money, getting a strategy with buying properties, investments, um, building out his commercial landscape, whether it's merch, media, all that stuff. I feel like I, I kind of understand how to holistically put someone in a position for the rest of their lives. Like Leon is a, a great example from being born in a tin shack in Jamaica to now. He's in a position now where we have these pieces in place where I know that that guy is going to be good for life and his son is going to be good for life and his son's son's going to be good for life because wow. we, we have built that. And if I played a very, very, obviously that's him and his effort that's done that. But I kind of know the blueprint of what, in my mind, every fighter should have to make sure that they have that generational wealth or that generational change. So I feel like that, that it's very rewarding when you see that. Like I'm not, that's, that's Leon's life. There's no flow on of money from him investing correctly, right? Or him buying a house and that kind of thing. But I feel like I've, I've got kind of a blueprint of what fighters should do, at least on a preliminary level. These are the building blocks to, to financial freedom um, for yourself and your family. So that I feel is kind of my purpose that when it's all said and done, if I do my job correctly, they should all be in that position at the end. It sounds a little cliche, but, but no, no, that, honestly, that's what I feel. It doesn't sound cliche. Uh, as someone who uh, has had and has representation, of, like you don't hear this type of thing and I've talked to fighters about this. Like. I, I kind of feel like you're about to enter a bit of a problem here. Not to say that we're some gigantic show here, but like 
people are going to read that right there. What you just said about, it's not just about negotiating fights, right? It's not just about the next one. It's about 10 years from now. It's about setting yourself up. I don't know if a lot of people do that. And so I worry that now people are going to reach out to you and ask (laughs) you to represent them because you seem to have figured out the model that every fighter desires. And that's the level I want to go into. And that's, I guess, back to the business model question. If I have 50 fighters, it's really hard to invest that much into everybody with a small team. Yeah, that's right? a great so, point. So with, with 10, it's like, I just started working with Ty and Ty's got a great team, Rice there in, 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 in Australia and everybody. And it's like, I want to make sure that we're working together to do that for Ty, someone else who came from, from a yeah. childhood background, right? And, and everybody, I want to make sure those building blocks are there if I got 50 clients, that's really hard to do. Mm. So that, I guess, is the essence of the business model. You know I love Leon. Leon's my guy. I mean, mm. a little bit of work on the goalkeeping, though. I mean, that one. That dude, <laughs> what is this? He had a few good ones. Show. Yeah, I did tell him. Who's that kid from Sex oh, That just... kid scored on him? What is that all about? I was... Like, um... Leon, what? It was like going like two miles an hour. I know. I know. <laughs> that looked like the fix was in, honestly. You Maybe because so? they were up. Maybe they wanted to make it closer. What and a then scene Stormzy was blasting. Yes. What a scene, though. I so knew good at Wembley. Seventy four thousand. No, is it Old Trafford? Old Trafford. Sorry, seventy four thousand. Yes, it looked like a real, like it looked like a World Cup match. Crazy, there. crazy. Yeah, and it's they raise like ninety million pounds or something, and something like that. In that case, like, do they reach out to Leon or do, does that came through Vicky at the UFC? So they reach so out good. to UFC. Vicky reach out to me. Now, do they reach out saying we want Leon Edwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that just speaks to his status, right? Yeah, Are they reaching out massive. this time last year, pre, right? No, no, no. And that's massive. Like Soccer yes. Aid, obviously, this side of the world, we don't know. But Soccer Aid's massive there. Obviously, 74,000, 90 million raised. Like for his profile, even like in the UK, is massive. It was like for me, even, I was like, man, look at Leon out there with Very all these proud. celebrities, right? It's Very like, proud. He wasn't stoked that he was in goal. But did did but they I think- force him to do that? Oh, they just assigned it. Like, oh, so, but, okay. but I think yeah. for a TV time, you're going to get more TV time. Yes, goal. everyone was talking about him. Good yeah, or he bad had a shocker. <laughs> he had a shocker. But he did have some good saves. He too. did, I did. I just and did. they won. Yes, yes. No, he so. was very dependable back there. It was just yes. a couple of uh, shots. That um, was bad. <laughs> yes, I did the, the celebration of the kid after. I was like, yeah, this kid yeah, scored yeah. on you. Uh, um, how did you get Max? Max, so... But I'm not sure if you're familiar with Brad Slater at WME. Of course, um, yes. Super agent. Legend. Yeah, legend. Super agent, massive MMA fan. Worked with Max on that, on that side. Max um, stopped working with his old manager and he reached out while I was still at Paradigm um, through Brad. And was speaking to Max, like <laughs> that process was going on when I resigned. Oh, wow. So then I'd resigned and, and Max's lawyer, Stuart, like was I guess figured out that I was gone because I, I didn't tell him because I, I didn't want to touch that you know because it was kind of a weird spot and then Stuart called me and he's like do you leave I'm like I'm so sorry to you and Max I'm so sorry that like because I was the one communicating there I was like I'm so sorry that timing is so bad and they're like what are you gonna do same thing I like didn't have a company I was like I don't really know I'm figuring it out and they're like well just let us know what you end up doing and then couple of weeks go by and I was like, hey, I, I'm going to stay in MMA. I'm going to manage people and then went from there. There was a period there. I remember when I heard about this and then I didn't bother you, but then I reached out about something. And then like when you call someone and they're overseas, um, the, the, the ring sounds different. Yeah. And then I called you and you were in Australia and like you felt so removed. You felt so distant. Yeah. And I was like, man, like, I almost felt like in the middle of the night, you just packed up and left MMA. <laughs> and for a moment there, you were you were telling me like, you have nothing to do with this, that, and the other. Uh, did that kind of feel good? Like you couldn't have been further away from America, right? You're yeah. literally in Perth, which well, is hours and hours away. And you're like the whole craziness of this sport and Izzy had just fought, right? And that was a crazy event, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Uh, was it nice to kind of just remove yourself for a moment? Yeah, well, I was, I was, I was meant, one of my best mates was getting married in Perth the same day Yuri was meant to fight Glover. Ah. And then Yuri got injured, so that fight was off. So I changed my flights to make it to my mate's wedding. You were going to miss the wedding? Yeah. It was a world title fight, you know. Yeah, man, it was like, I know. It's one, oh, wow. one of those ones. Um, so, I, so I'd moved my flights forward and I'd, I'd resigned. And then I was flying to Australia the next couple of days and I really like didn't even know, like there was no plan. I didn't even know how anyone was going to react. So going being at home in Perth and having that wedding right away. But for the whole month of December, I, I didn't work. Wow. For the first time in eight years, I did not work. I was just like being with my family. My baby niece was there. Like it was, I think had I'd stayed in, in my house in LA, like my may have gotten a bit like, oh, what am I doing? But yeah, I went home and it's like, 
It's like I forgot about it right away. I was like, I took this like like a month off, and then January kind of started getting some momentum with 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 um, the chosen advisory. But yeah, it was kind of perfect. Yeah. Like I was there, and I was like, that's that's over in that country. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm 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 relaxing. Like it, it worked really well. I think for just for like the mental side. Sure, of, sure, you know, sure. I felt fine. Honestly, by the time I resigned, I was like. When I make decisions, I, I just mm. like I, I, I very rarely regret them, and I make decisions really fast. I, I can be like stubborn in that regard. So once it was done, I was like, "Cool, next thing." And then, but being there definitely helped me kind of just chill. So the good thing about having you here is I've been interested in all this stuff, and I know a lot of the fans are because they, you know, like I said. Uh, everyone seems like no one talks bad about you even the other managers and they all talk shit about each other no one talks mm. shit about you for whatever reason so kudos to you I know but I don't really like you know doesn't mean I, I need an edge or something no you don't need an edge <laughs> you're good you're good no drama it's good it's a massive um, heel but you have some massive names and a lot of them like we don't know much about mm. so if I can ask about a couple of them well, I was talking to Izzy about what was your reaction when they booked Rob and DDP because I thought the DDP fight was right there and then oh, you've got yeah. Sydney coming up why not just do DDP versus Izzy? Yeah, great. I, I hit Hunter right away. I text him like, I text him like, why are you killing off yeah. Izzy's, Izzy's opponents? And then Hunter called me and probably spoke about half an hour about their reasoning. Okay. And I gave, I didn't agree. And like we, like, he he explained it more and 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 I, just, I always like Hunter's um, very reasonable. Like he does, he's not emotional. Good. And and neither am I. Mm -hmm. So we always. Like we can talk about hotly contested things and never it never escalates. So he he explained their perspective. I explained our perspective. Like our thing is like, listen, Izzy's fought four of his last five fights have been rematches. Pereira, Vittori, Rob, all rematches. It's like we really want fresh blood. And I, I personally respect to to because I feel like Rob is gonna be like a ten to one favorite to win that, in my opinion. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like it's Rob, and then what we fight Rob again? Like, can we not? get something fresh and exciting and new. Um, Hunter gave their perspective, which, which I understood from their perspective, and you know, agreed to disagree, and we'll see what happens in July is where we went. But yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> so the plan is Izzy in Sydney. Yeah, provided everything goes. My well, worry is that that's two months later. When does anyone fight in a number one contender fight and fight two months later? It never yeah. happens. It's 10 weeks exactly. I count it because Della's fighting on that same card, yeah. and then they want Della in Sydney. Got it. So that's- Big I, fight for him too. Yeah. Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, really t into the top ten. So, what if what if those two guys are banged up? I mean, Strickland fights in yeah. a couple of weeks, so there's that. Um, you know, I, I know that, that Paulo Costa and and has got a fight. Yeah. I don't know if you do that again, but I guess we we got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. I mean, for for like ten weeks is actually quite a long time. Unless there's a major injury, I think they should be able to figure it out. But. Yeah, it's not it's not ideal, and you know Izzy like Izzy Izzy wants to fight. He wanted to fight in July. Yeah, so se September's already a stretch for him. So we're gonna have to figure something out. I remember talking to you after Leon's win and how emotional you got. Yeah, what was it like morning. seeing uh, Izzy win in Miami? That was the I'd say those two in my career are the like the hardest I felt it. Like I cried in Seoul Lake and I cried in Miami. Oh wow, they're, they're the only two that's really hit me that hard because like Izzy's they're both really close good close like personal friends of mine and it was just that that week was like it was so intense like so intense like I don't know if Izzy spoke about it on the show there was this one time at the gym uh, in Miami during fight week and there was an ice bath in one of the other rooms and I went in and used the ice bath and and as I'm like done Izzy comes in and I'm like yeah how you feel and he, he was like like blank like blank like wouldn't I was like are you okay and he went in the mirror and Ike, who's security, Ike's like, yeah, everybody just get out. And I like kind of stayed. And he was just staring himself in the mirror. Like this, like, like it's like he couldn't hear me, he couldn't hear Ike. It was like this like intense, like dark thing. And he was staring at himself, like breathing heavily. And I was like, it was like he was like possessed. Whoa. Yeah. Legit. I don't know if he told you that. No, he didn't. He had this like, he went to, he remember he said he went to a dark place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in, he was, it was, it was crazy. And like I know Izzy, he's like we're always laughing, joking, fun, friendly guy. It was like it was like a, it was like he was possessed, and that happened twice during the fight week. Whoa! So there was this intensity where I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then as he walked out, when he came out to like headstrong, and he was like, it was so intense. It's a crazy scene with these because we sit with his mum and dad. Yeah. I'm like seeing him like all pumped up. I feel sick. His mum and dad are sitting there praying. And the emotion, I was like, this is so I tell myself, I go, why the fuck do I do this for a living? Why do I, do? it was just so much anxiety. 
And then like, and then, so I was so balled up because he means so much to me as a friend and a person. This fight's like, had he lost that? Or like, where does that leave him? It was just, I was like, I was so anxious for that fight. And then when he won and he was against the cage, I was like, oh, and then he knocked him out and then just kind of exploded. So that was crazy. That was crazy. Like he, he I don't know how he does that. Like the mental, mental strength of that guy with all things considered, I couldn't believe that. And so then, yeah, that was a heavy, that was a Post fight one. celebration and the speech yeah. and the after party there. I yeah. mean, the presence of mind on these guys, it's insane. I mean, Leon's was just raw emotion. Right. Is he to like, yeah, I, I, I'm in awe of them sometimes, honestly. Like how, how is presence of mind? It's Were crazy. you nervous for the uh, Leon trilogy fight? I haven't talked to you since then. Um, less so. Okay. Less so. I don't know. Leon, Leon was like, the, the crazy thing about that kick He's like, we were, I was really confident going into that first Kamaru fight. Do you mean the second? The, the second, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. The crazy thing about that kick is not only like it was a last minute and it, and it you know, the, the comeback and everything. Like now looking at what he was able to do in the third fight, the significance of that kick, because if he didn't land that kick, the history, like it's going to go down as he was never that good and mm. he got beat. Mm. But we knew he was capable of doing what he did in London. And it was just the altitude, there's some stuff he didn't talk about, injuries, et cetera, and he just looked terrible in that fight. And that's why before the kick, I was sitting there in the crowd in, in, in Utah, so depressed, like, oh, he didn't represent himself well. So without that kick, not only do you not get the victory in the title, you don't get the ability to prove that he can do that over five rounds and be the better fighter. Mm. It's crazy, yeah, right? It's, it is it's crazy. crazy, right? One so, thing changes so, everything. Yeah, so now he got to prove that it wasn't a fluke, so... I don't know why I wasn't as nervous for those because we've, he's so good. Like people, ask people that train with him, watch it, he's so good. Yeah. So I, I always felt like more, almost more confident in, in, in that one. And then the thing that was just made me nervous was the point deduction. Because mm. I had him winning and I was like, oh, this land is a draw and then we're doing a fourth. Mm. But no, that felt really good as well. When do we see him again? Hopefully, we, we said we were ready to go from August. His foot was pretty banged up after, okay. um, after the second one. He like came out and he got like a, this like infection type thing in the bone. So his foot was pretty banged up. After Salt Lake? No, no, after London. Got it. This got year. It. And then um, they were tr trying to maybe do a pay-per-view in July back in the UK, but I don't think ESPN wanted to do it because of the time differences. So then we said he's good from August. Obviously they got O'Malley in August. So, and then September's Australia doesn't really make sense. So I guess he's good to go as soon as they know what they're doing. So it could be uh, Abu Dhabi or New York. Yep or the December card. Yeah, one of those. How do you feel about Colby being his next opponent? It makes sense now, you know? I mean, at first, at first... Um, makes more sense than Bilal. I think so. Well, like, when it first happened and, and like, he no-sold it, which was great. I think a bit of that was a few years ago, Colby no-selling him. Sure. Now he no-sold him in London. I think, like, Leon said to me, and I don't want to break the fourth wall here. He doesn't actually give a fuck who he fights. Okay. Like when you're the title, it's like he doesn't give a fuck. But it was nice to get a little nudge back at the Okay. Goal. But in reality, we were waiting for what happened with Masvidal and Burns. Because if Masvidal goes and knocks out Burns, him and Leon, regardless of what you want to say about who deserves it, that's like the would have been one of the biggest fights you could do in the sport at the time. Mm -hmm. Him and Leon for the title. So we were waiting for that. Um, obviously, Jorge didn't win. So then it was like, well, what do we do now? You've got Gilbert. Bilal and Colby, and then Bilal and, and, and Gilbert fought. Colby's ranked high. It's like if you got to pick, Colby probably moves the needle the most, makes Leon the most money. Um, he doesn't think it's a particularly hard fight. So, And the UFC won it, obviously. That's their preference. So I don't think we're going to die, you know, plant our flag and, and, and die on the hill to say, no, we want to fight Bilal instead of Colby. Mm. You know, it's a partnership. So they're like, we prefer Colby. Leon's like, yeah, we'll do Colby then. No chance it's in the UK, it seems, or is it possible? No, no, I think they'll go back next year because they're doing July. I think they can. It, I think it comes down to, to ESPN negotiations between where they do their pay. I'm not privy to that. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know. I think it'll be US or Abu Dhabi, and then they'll go do another pay per view there next year. Do you think there's any chance, given his popularity, let's say he wins this fight, that they would go to a stadium? I hope so. I hope so. The problem is finding an indoor one. Because the UK, obviously, the weather's so temperamental in the UK. Wales. Yeah, there, there's something wrong. Someone explained the problem with that to me. Um, the boxing, they're able to do it because they can put it at a certain time. They do it a bit earlier, I think, oh. because it's it's they got to do like US 
time or as close to. It's something to do with there isn't that many hotel rooms in Cardiff and there's only like one train that ends at a certain time. It's a logistical problem that uh, stops that or something. Yeah, it's shame. all logistical. And, and I don't think UFC loves stadium shows because really it's not a good viewing experience. Right. Like I've been to the ones in Australia. It, it's, unless you're right at the front, it's yeah. not a good viewing yeah, yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. So I, I understand that. But for the sake of legacy and history, I would, I would love that for him, obviously. The other big one that I'm wondering, and everyone is, is uh, Yuri, Yuri yeah. Prochaska. I saw Jamal Hill recently yeah. say, like, I'm tired of waiting. Yeah, we're, we're, Yuri's good to go. He's ready. Yeah, we're not. He's not. You're not waiting on Yuri. Yuri Yuri's good. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. They, they again. Yeah. I saw his post where it seemed like he was declaring that, but, yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. What's, they, what's they, the holdup? Just finding a slot? Well, I think what, what the, they have, they have Colby and Leon is a main event worthy fight. And Yuri and Jamal's a main event worthy fight, but it looks like August is booked. September's probably going to be Izzy. October, I think they got to put Islam there. Yeah. Um, November, the talk of Jones. December, so it's like, where do you put these guys if they don't have main events? What happens in the days of two pay, uh, two title fights on a pay per view? Yeah, I mean that that may. I don't think they're opposed to that necessarily, but I think they're kind of. If I had to had to read between the lines in our conversations, I think a lot depends on what happens in July to make sure they got Izzy for September. Do they need to move that if someone's injured? So I think maybe after this July 8 card, we'll get, things will start moving pretty quickly. But Yuri's 100% ready to go. go. UFC told us him and Jamal's the fight. They just need to place it there. So no concerns about that. Okay. He's back. Um, Casey O'Neill is back too. Yep. How did she uh, handle the last fight? All right. Casey, the chosen princess. Yeah. I know she'll be watching this. Um, <laughs> She's your only female fighter. My only female fighter. She's like my little sister, honestly. Okay. I love Casey. She uh, does my head in sometimes, but I love her. <laughs> she, she's... She's honestly like like a, a little sister to me. So, she's uh, she's good. It, it was she she took it hard. Like she's a, she wears you know Casey wears her heart on her sleeve, and she's a very emotional person. She'll tell you that. She took it hard, and you start to ask the questions. As like she that was a nine month ACL turnaround. Yeah, the torn ACL. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. Yeah, very quick. It's a tough opponent. Yeah, she she he won a tough opponent. I just didn't think she didn't fight well. She didn't adjust. She didn't go to her grappling, and and I think that hurt her because. I think she knew she could be a lot better, and that they're the losses that suck when you think you could, like, you get your ass kicked, you get knocked out, like shit happens. But when it's like, oh, I really underperformed. So um, with Casey, it's just reminding her, like, you're 25 years old. This is a sport where people lose. It's not all over. Like, I still think she's going to be a world champion. It's just get back and build, and don't be so hard on yourself. And and she'll get there. She'll get there. Does Ty have his next fight? Uh, not not yet, but it'll be Sydney. Sydney, okay. it'll be Sydney. We're just figuring out. Who are we talking about? Who are we thinking? Anyone in particular? Anyone around there? I like Volkov. I like Rosenstrike. Okay, as well, someone who's not going to wrestle him, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Not that he can't handle that. He's knocked out wrestlers, but you know he, he's coming off some really hard fights like Cyril Gann and Sergey, two title fight chat. You know, yeah, yeah, title contenders. So he took the Sergey one on short notice, but um, like Ty, I believe is proved even in the in the. Um, Cyril fight, like he rocked him, hurt him, like he's the elite of the elite, and I don't think you gotta like rebuild him, if you will. But a striker fight would be fun for the Sydney crowd. And by the way, I'm not asking you specifically about Max because he's coming yeah. in in a couple of minutes here. Although I feel like if I ask him, like, is it true? Yeah, I saw a zombie wrote on my Instagram yeah. post today. He's like, I'm Let's waiting. Go. Yeah, uh, we all are. Everyone's waiting. Yeah, yeah. That, that's. I mean, Max said I won that fight. Zombie said I won that fight. And, you know, UFC will do their thing. It's just picking the day. Hopefully. And I mean, they got to lock it in, but yeah. Sure. Uh, something I learned about you, and I've known you for a very long time, almost a decade now. Uh, I never knew you were a big pro wrestling guy. Yeah. And then I see you at a freaking uh, Lucha. Lucha show. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like dropping all this stuff on the, the bloodline, this yeah, and all yeah. that. So you're a big pro wrestling fan. Yeah, I, I would say there's. I'm not, in, I'm not in MMA if it's not for pro wrestling. That, that was, was like the, my, some of my earliest memories of life is watching pro wrestling. Like, I, I don't know how it worked from a licensing perspective, but I guess in Perth, when I was like six or seven, we, we had, WCW was on TV. We didn't get WWF until I was probably like 10 or 11. Okay. So yeah, started WCW. That was hot my whole life. Until probably like five years ago, the reality era didn't really do it for me and I dropped off a bit. But in the past like year and a half, I'm like, I'm watching, You're watching everything. Everything, yeah. AW? <laughs> nah, oh, okay. a bit, a bit. I don't watch NXT. I, I watch it like from a social media perspective. I follow the social media. I'll get yeah. like the, the hits on that, but more WWE. There's a great uh, Australian uh, wrestler in NXT. Actually, I think he's Buddy. moving up. No, Grayson Waller. 
Yeah, they does shoeies. Yes, this guy's <laughs> great. Shoeies. He's a huge MMA fan too. Yeah, I met him at WrestleMania. Ha- have you ever considered repping the wrestlers? No one's ever done nah. that. No one's done. Meaning they have representation, but no, yeah. I, no one's done MMA. Actually, you know Lloyd. Lloyd Pearson, I think for a minute was repping uh, Charlotte Flair. Right. But just given your interest in it, have you ever thought about that, or is it just a completely different world? It's, I wouldn't even know where to start. Okay. Like people ask about boxing, it's like I, I love. There's, there's two parts to it. Firstly. To, I think to be excellent, you got to be all in. And it's like, I, I want to specify on MMA. I know the MMA business, like the back of my hand, I'd be an amateur boxing or amateur wrestling, not as in the sport amateur. I would be the amateur in that world because I don't know anything about it. I know like the business of wrestling, how some of it works, but I wouldn't like, no relationships there, nothing. Like I could learn it, but I, I don't think I would be, it would take me a while to grow in that. And I'm happy where I am. And then the second thing is, not I still love MMA. I still watch a lot of MMA. But when it's like what you do for work and you've seen behind the curtain, it can take some of the, the fun out of it. So in the, the WWE and boxing in particular, I don't want to go there because then I can't enjoy it as a fan mm. as much. So that... That I don't see myself doing that. You never know. But I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I totally understand. So you just want to stick to MMA, even though... I believe uh, initially, and I think it still might be the case in your logo, there are boxing yeah. clubs. Yeah, that, but that was just like, so many people picked up on that. I guess you said your mom mentioned that <laughs> My too. My mom right? didn't yes. like it. Yeah. But I was like, to me, the boxing glove is like, so I, I, I started in Muay Thai. Like that was what, I was pro wrestling as a fan, but Muay Thai was. was like you competed? Yeah, it changed my life. Okay. Like that's what really changed my life. Like I, 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 I won't go too deep into it, but but changed me a lot as a person. You know, okay. gave me a lot of confidence. You know, and changed changed a lot of who I was. Could, could I ask how it changed specifically? I mean, I was I was I came from a smaller town. Perth is it's it's not like a country town, but it's smaller. You know, I'm from the western suburbs of Perth. Everybody knows everyone. I was very growing up. I I, I really cared what people thought, mm. right? And and I exuded a lot of confidence. I'm naturally a, a, a an introvert. Like I'm I'm not out a lot. I'm an introverted person and I exude a lot of confidence, but I'm, I wasn't a confident person at all as a kid. I was not a, you know, I, I, I used to get anxious. I used to really care what people thought. Like I was the first generation where social, we were the first ones with social right, media, right? right. And I, I really, really cared a lot and it wore on me. It was when I moved to the Gold Coast and so I had a lot of like fake confidence, right? When I moved to the Gold Coast, I left Perth when I was 17 you know, it started kind of fresh over there. I was, at, I was at uni. When I started doing Muay Thai, I found that I gained real confidence. Mm. You understand? Like, like I was, I was, I was, it made me a better person. And now I think a lot of my success has been because I have a good sense of self. Like, to a point where it may even be negative, I really don't care what people think if they're not people that are important to me. I really don't care about that. And, and that, a lot of that I gained through Muay Thai. I gained real confidence, not in like, oh, I can fight now. But that crosses over into the rest of your life and just confidence in business, in, in relationships, in talking to people. Before, and I, I was deep, deep into Muay Thai. Like I was training twice a day, I was fighting, like I got into the culture and that really changed me as a person. When I came back after training there in the Gold Cup, when I moved to the US, I was completely different and that, that fake confidence that I exuded was real confidence and I attribute that to martial arts and Muay Thai and the world that I'm in now. Wow, and now you're representing some of the biggest three champions out of your yeah. t- 30% of your roster are <laughs> champions. Then you've got legends like Max, Futures. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty damn impressive at 31. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm very yeah. happy. Yeah. And you went yeah. out on your own, independent Tim. Yep. And yep. you travel less. Way less. That's it's great. Best. It's great. Yeah, and that was a big thing. Like, I wouldn't say I'm working less, but I'm working now on my own terms and, and you know, not being in a big company, you get more time. And I had to... I had to, for, for the eight years there, I was like doing it. I felt like I was doing everything for everybody else, mm. my clients, my company. And while that still has to be the mindset, because I'm in, it's a service industry, I work for these people, but um, I really, I feel like I'm doing more for myself finally. And that feels good. And I was kind of scared to do that because I'm like, that's going to make me a bad manager. Mm. But I actually feel like I'm, I'm doing more for myself for the first time in a long time. And it feels really good. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. I appreciate well done, it. my friend. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks for having us. Uh, I think in a matter of seconds here, we're going to be joined by uh, your your. Well, I was going to say your newest client, but he is second newest. Second newest Max Holloway. Oh, there he is, Tim Simpson. Everyone. <laughs> Thank you.